The Royal National Park is a protected national park that is located in Sutherland Shire in the Australian state of New South Wales, just south of Sydney and is situated on Darawal Country. The 151 square kilometre National Park is about 29 kilometres south of the Sydney Central Business District near the localities of Loftus, Otford, and Waterfall. It is the third oldest national park in the world after Bogd Khanul in Mongolia, established in 1783, and Yellowstone in the US, established in 1872. It was founded by Sir John Robertson, acting Premier of New South Wales, and formally proclaimed on April 26, 1879. Its original name was just National Park, but it was renamed in 1955 after Elizabeth II, Queen of Australia passed by in the train during her 1954 tour. The park was added to the Australian National Heritage List in December 2006. The park is situated in traditional lands of the Darawal, an Aboriginal Australian people. More precisely, the area known today as Royal National Park is the northeastern section of the country of the Aboriginal language group. Darawal country encompasses ocean and estuarine shorelines from Botany Bay to the Shoalhaven River and forested lands as far west as the Georges River in Appen, and possibly Camden. The park includes today's settlements of Audley, Mayanbar, and Bundina. There was once a railway line connected to the eastern suburbs and Illawarra line but this closed and was converted to a heritage tramway operated by the Sydney Tramway Museum in Loftus. Audley can be accessed by road from Loftus, Waterfall or Otford, and there are several railway stations on the outskirts of the park. Bundina and Mayanbar can also be accessed by road through the park or by the passenger ferry service from Cronulla. There are numerous cycling and walking trails, barbecue areas and picnic sites throughout the park. Over 100 kilometers of walking tracks take in a wide range of scenery. Cycling is allowed on some fire trails and only on specially marked tracks within the park. The specially marked mountain biking tracks are bidirectional. Care should be taken when traversing these trails. A fee of $12. OO applies when taking a car into the park. The most popular walk is the Coast Walk, which skirts the park's eastern edge and delivers exceptional coastal scenery. It is a 30-kilometer track, involving walking from Bundina to Otford, or vice versa. It's recommended that walkers allow two days for the walk. This walk is often done as part of the Duke of Edinburgh's award. The Wallamara track was constructed in 1975 to meet the growing need for environmental education and as a supplement to the park's walking track system. The park is intensely used for environmental education by schools, TAFs, universities and other groups. The park has been burned in bushfires on several occasions, most notably in 1939, 1994 and in the 2001 Black Christmas fires. Australian native bush naturally regenerates after bushfires and as of 2008 few signs of these fires remain visible. In times of extreme fire danger the park service might close the park to ensure visitor safety. There are camping sites at Bonnie Vale, North Era, and Alula Falls. These are the only places where camping is permitted within the park, and they are regulated with a booking-slash-registration system, which requires pre-booking a site. The park charges a vehicle access fee, but is free for people on foot. Royal National Park contains a wide variety of terrain. Roughly, landscapes in the park vary from coastal cliffs broken by beaches and small inlets to an ancient high plateau broken by extensive and deep river valleys. The river valleys drain from south to north where they run into Port Hacking, the extensive but generally shallow harbour inlet which forms the northern border of the park. When looking across the park from east to west the rugged folds of valley after valley fade into the distance. The geology of the site consists mostly of the Triassic Hawkesbury sandstone with some sections of the park having the more recent richer Wianamata shale capping. Deep below the Hawkesbury sandstone belt lies Nurebean shales which is mixture of shale and sandstone under which and within which are untapped coal. Seams which run right through Sydney and are mined extensively where they come closer to the surface south of the National Park near Wollongong. Sections of recent alluvium fringes of estuarine watercourse where the endangered ecological communities Swamp Oak Woodlands and Swamp Mahogany Woodlands grow still. The majority of the park's coastline is dominated by tall cliffs, forming unique features such as wedding cake rock, facading vast heathland. Running the full coastal length of the park is a coastal heathland characterized by hardy, low-growing, salt-tolerant shrubs that spread across rocky, hard terrain with very little topsoil. The coast itself is composed mostly of high cliffs reaching a height of nearly 100 meters at the southern end. These cliffs are punctuated by a number of fine, sandy beaches open to the ocean and providing fine swimming and surfing. 
Several of the beaches can be reached by road, others only by several hours of bushwalking. There are a small number of rocky coves. The beaches, two of which have volunteer surf life-saving clubs and large car parks, are amongst the most visited areas of the park. These heathlands are a hotspot for many small birds that have forsaken the suburbs of Sydney such as the New Holland Huneater. Common vegetation on the exposed heaths on the headlands and cliffside paths include coastal rosemary, darwina, bracelet honey myrtle, she-oak, white kunzia, sundew, grass trees, ridged heath myrtle, snakehood orchids, prostrate forms of coast banksia, and longleaf matrush. Common vegetation on top of the ancient sand dunes above the coastal path includes silver banksia, scrub oak, silky haka, and pine heath. Sections of rare and threatened clifftop grasslands occur along exposed and windy sites which are generally dominated by longleaf mat rush and kangaroo grass. Many heath specialist birds are present in the heaths which include Lewin's honeyeater, New Holland honeyeater, beautiful firetail, chestnut rumped heather wren and the southern emu wren in Royal National Park. Literal rainforest has survived the ravages that occurred elsewhere during the 19th and 20th centuries. An example of this vegetation occurs in the southern stretch of the coast walk, often referred to as the palm jungle, and includes a typical Takaru forest. Undergrown by coastal tea tree and longleaf matrush. Moving farther inland the terrain rises to a series of very rocky ridges and plateaus characterized by hardy, low-growing shrubs and very poor, rocky soil. These ridges are the remnants of an ancient, much larger plateau that has been deeply eroded into an extensive series of river valleys. This specific ridge land habitat is particularly significant for Sydney as most similar habitat was left unprotected and was subsequently destroyed too make way for cheap development which has made many species only found ridges threatened with extinction due to extreme habitat clearance slash fragmentation. Soils on plateau land are often up to 2 meters deep and consist of on sandstone ridges, sandy pods all interspersed with pockets of clay derived. Clay ridges and plateaus also have deep soils but are far rarer due to lack of representation in the park on these sites the soil is derived from Wianamata clay and is considered rich land producing good quality forest. Many species of eucalyptus, such as the Eucalyptus Luekmaniana, thrive in the Royal National Park. On the sides of the steep river valleys that punctuate the uplands the terrain changes to exposed rock with collected pockets of soil. Although still fairly rocky, a large number of eucalyptus and other tree species are prevalent. Small streams are to be found reasonably frequently and understory plants cohabitate with the larger trees, although the terrain is still fairly open and easy to move through. Tree heights in this area reach an average maximum of about 10 meters. The plant mix and geography conditions in this area are typical of much of the terrain in the coastal areas of New South Wales but with many widespread genera having highly localized species in the Royal National Park. This sort of habitat is one of the most floristically diverse in Sydney Basin. This environment is classed as sclerophyll open forest and is divided into dry and wet sclerophyll forest. Factors that shape this habitat are primarily bushfires, low phosphorus slash nitrogen levels, intense summer heat and low water levels. Resulting in a diverse floristic assembly of flora and fauna with apparently divergent paths in similar habitats, for example scribbly gums have smooth bark trees in a manner which reduces their chance of catching on fire while stringy barks have bark which easily catches a light clearing the way for its fire-stimulated seedlings. The Forest Island, a section of forest in the park south mostly flanked by the Hacking River. In raised valley floors such as these, many more species of flora thrive than in other environments of the park. Commonly encountered vegetation in this environments include but are not limited to, Sydney redgums, Sydney peppermints, Port Jackson pine, red bloodwoods, Pomodaris sp. Old man banksia, hairpin banksia, rock banksia, Sydney baronia, native sarsaparilla, violet twining pea, dusky coral pea. The traditional narcotic hop bush, native pea, sometimes dwarf apple, parasitic devil's twine, native panic, lepidosperma sp. Grass, forest grass trees, Sydney warata, flannel flowers, blueberry ash, silky haka, variable bossia, bonnet. Orchids, hyacinth orchids, pomax umbellata, native parsley, edible native currants, broad-leaved g-bungs, Sydney golden wattles. Jimia lilies, various shio oaks, flax leaf wattle, bracken, Gray spider flower, red spider flower, pink spider flower and native iris to literally name a few of the hundreds of beautiful flora encountered in this diverse and widespread habitat. 
Even certain hybrid species may be encountered such as the common Banksia erisifolia ex spinulosus or the rarer Angophora castata ex hispida. Birds that frequent this habitat include golden whistlers, yellow-tailed black cockatoos, laughing kookaburra, basilo. Novi Guinea, eastern whipbirds, New Holland honeyeaters, eastern spinebill. Rufus whistlers, willy wagtails, superb fairy wrens, crimson rosellas slash mountain. Lowry, yellow rumped thornbills and white-browed scrub wrens. Other commonly encountered animals in this habitat include native honeybees, wallaroos, common echidnas as well as other far rarer species such as the koala, the dingo or the predatory native marsupial the spotted quoll. Karanga track view of Waterfall Creek, one of many that run throughout the park with rich soils and good supply of water the valley floors are cooler and more humid than any other part of the park. Large tree species such as Australian cedar and the larger eucalypt species dominate. Tree height reach 50 meters or more and a rich understory of fern, wattles, and other medium-sized plants proliferate. Some small areas are classified as temperate rainforest. These areas are characterized by dense groves of very large trees including the iconic Port Jackson fig and Moreton Bay fig trees. The absence of light leads to a lack of undergrowth other than a profusion of ferns. These are among the more popular areas for visitors to the park. The Park Service is also very careful to protect these areas due to their general rarity in the hot, arid Australian landscape. A tributary of the Hacking River, beside Lady Carrington Drive impressive groves of turpentine and blackbutt. Trees may be seen growing straight up into the sky forming an open canopy with widely spaced trunks. In these characteristic areas they are generally considered open forest, they may have a grassy understory, a sclerophyll shrubbery or alternatively. They may have a rainforest subcanopy or a rainforest understory with growth being densest nearest to the valley floor or permanent watercourses. In these turpentine forests often hundreds of cabbage palms may be seen growing in dense tall thickets which are rarely touched by fire or they may exist as young plants in open grassy spaces which are burnt regularly enough not to form visible trunks. Rainforest pockets are dominated by jackwood and sassafras. The lily peely produces a fruit edible raw. Another common species is the coachwood which were used extensively from Australian rainforests to manufacture horse-drawn coaches. Birds distinctive to these rich rainforest habitats include topknot pigeons, green catbirds, rufous fantails and black-faced monarchs. Two interesting birds often encountered in dense scrub or rainforest include the flightless brush turkey and the noise-mimicking superb lyrebird. In a zone generally up to 10 to 25 meters away from running water grows a distinct vegetation community often containing many rare or threatened species only found along several streams in the world. Common vegetation growing in this zone include blackbutt, Sydney red gum, water gums, bottle brush, tea trees, wolsia, epicris sp. Heath banksia, pittosporum undulatum, pine leaf g bungs, willow leaved haca, lomandra fluviatilis, bulrushes. Rushes, reeds and tree ferns a variety of different mollusks. Crustaceans, insects, fish and birds call the riparian zone their home with a variety of life living near on in the creeks of the Royal National Park. Long-finned eels which migrate from oceanic spawning grounds as babies and adults mature in the creeks and streams of the Royal National Park and can often be seen in the murky depths of pools and ponds along freshwater courses such as the Hacking River. Mudflats exist along the shoreline of the Royal National Park which is substantial enough to sustain a simplistic system of mangrove woodlands. Especially along the Port Hacking Estuary with the occasional clump of stunted tree on the seaward coastline and sheltered coves. Vegetation in the mangroves consists almost exclusively of the grey mangrove growing up to 4 meters as well as the river mangrove. Which is usually only found on the shoreward edge of mangrove woods or in the brackish end of the Port Hacking Estuary. These mangroves are important nursery grounds for nearly all major angling fish including yellowfin bream, flat tail, sea mullet, ludric and sand whiting which are caught in adjoining waters as adults. Mangroves also provide rich organic matter to the port hacking estuary by fixing carbon into the river system through the addition of leaves into the thick rich black mud. Many crustacean and mollusk species rely on mangroves as a source of food whether by providing foraging through leaf litter, mud or direct predation of the mangrove trees and seeds. Soldier crabs, semaphore crab, blue swimmer crabs and hermit crabs also call the mangroves home. A more casual visitor to the mangroves at high tide is the eastern sea garfish which scoots around just an inch from the surface and is virtually invisible unless viewed through a snorkel. 
Dozens of different bird species may be seen foraging in the rich mudflats and in and around mangrove flats many of these birds being threatened with extinction and protected by international agreements. Commonly seen bird species include eastern curlews, striated herons, brown honeyeaters, lichmera, indistincta, little egrets, royal spoonbills, white-faced gray herons, Australasian little bitterns, pied oyster catchers, Australasian pelican, sacred ibis, chestnut teal and azure kingfishers. Rock shelves, such as those found south of the Marley beaches and the famous figure eight pools populate the central to southern coast of the park. A series of sandstone rock shelves and rock pools fringe the entire coastline and port hacking estuary line of the national park broken on by small sandy beaches and gentle freshwater inlets. Some of the most commonly encountered mollusks in this habitat include black neridis, turban snails, zebra snails as well as the commercially farmed Sydney rock oyster. One of the most common and distinctive seaweed species that grow among the rock pools and the nearshore rock shelves is Neptune's necklace. A seaweed made of small buoyant fleshy bead-like structures which resemble strongly that of a necklace. Beds of the primitive sea squirt chondroy are common along coastal rock shelves which are covered by high tide and near sea spray. Consider the most beautiful and obvious of the Royal National Park sea anemone is the Warata anemone named after the Warata flower due to its corresponding flame red coloration. A common sea star found growing in the rock pools is the biscuit sea star. The fatally toxic blue-lined octopus, the most common of the blue-ringed octopus species in the area, can, when touched, prove to be fatal within minutes. They are nearly impossible to spot unless pointed out, and can be found in small or large rock pools. The best way to avoid stings completely is to not allow any part of one's body to enter any rock pool. The National Falls, the namesake of the nearby suburb of Waterfall, as it appeared in December 2010 Watamola, a lagoon and beach complex popular among visitors of the Royal National Park during summer the Eagle Head Rock Formation on the coast track. As viewed in November 2016 Wurong Beach, Royal National Park, New South Wales. Royal National Park has a number of heritage-listed sites, including, Royal National Park offers one legally sanctioned and several unofficial naturist beaches. Wurong Beach is the only authorized nude bathing area in the National Park. Informally listed places include Little Jibbon Beach, Jibbon Beach, and Ocean Beach. Thanks for watching.